Okay, it appears that we are now live. Uh, welcome to the stream. Uh, yesterday we looked at uh, Earth-Mars distance problem here. We wrote uh, some code that works and gives us an answer. So, of course, the uh, important thing to do when you have code that's working and gives you a, an answer um, is to change it completely so that it breaks. That is the uh, programmer's creed is to never have um, is to never have code that works for too long without changing it. Uh, and actually, in this case, there are a couple of good reasons to change this code. Um, and we can even, gen especially if we're going to generalize this at some point, which we should. Okay. Um, over here in the function gfq, I compute three different positions and then subtract. Uh, in fact, I don't. And to, I compute these positions relative to the solar system barycenter, and then I subtract. There's no need to do that. I could have actually just used the Earth as my observation point, uh, and then I wouldn't even need to. Um, I wouldn't even need to subtract vectors. I could just measure the length of the vectors that are the distance from Earth to the Mars and from Earth to the Sun, and subtract those. So, a lot of extra things here that we don't need. Um, at some point, we're going to not call these Sun, Earth, and Mars. Um, in fact, I don't think we need... We're going to call them like P1, P2, because we are going to generalize this so you can find the distance uh, between um, you know, any two objects. So that's one change we're going to make right away. Um, and it also means we get rid of a few variables. That that's not really why we're doing it, though. We're doing it because it's actually slightly more efficient, because it, it means we're doing fewer calculations. I don't know how much faster the program will really be because it's pretty fast to begin with. So what we're going to do here is basically the same thing, except instead of from the solar system barycenter, we're going to say Earth. And oh, 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 oh. Yes. Once again, I have failed to SS HFS. So if I do an LS, right, transport endpoint is not connected. Woo! So SS <laughs> Because I, I take this machine down every night, um, bring it back up. I have a I have a really nice you know um, VirtualBox is a really nice freeze and unfreeze feature, but it's not quite good enough to keep an SSH FS tunnel open. Uh, so let me go ahead and do this. This time I cannot tell you the password. Now I should be able to do. There we go. And I can put Earth here. I sh I normally like to use NAFE IDs instead of the full name of the planet, but um, and Earth would be 399. But in this case, it looks like Earth. It's happy with Earth. So. Um, the problem is, like, for example, if you put Mars in here instead of 4, it doesn't work because Mars is actually four, um, 499, which is different from the Barry Center of the Mars system. Uh, and it's, it's a subtle difference, but it's enough to break the code as we saw earlier. Um, so here we'll just say Earth, and we have these two things we don't even need to subtract. And I think we need to be make sure we get this in the right direction, but... Uh, we don't even really need to uh, have temporary variables here. Um, so let's see. Yeah, so we have sun mm, um, minus v norm c. I need to be a little bit careful here because we need to make sure that positive means Mars is further. So if Mars is further in this case, what's going to happen is this is number is going to be negative. So we actually want v. It doesn't really matter, but we have to make a decision and stick with it. We have to be consistent here. All right, so, um, um, bah, mommy, by the way, my, okay, um, so if Mars is further, this is positive, if Mars is closer, this is negative, and this is a really, really nice way of shrinking this function down. This looks really nice. I, I really like the way this looks. Now, of course, the question is, you know, the piggy question is, which is not really that important, um, is whether or not it still works. Because, you know, blah, 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 blah. And we're going to make another change here. But first, let's make sure uh, this works. Um, because when you're breaking a program, it, it's important to do the least amount of work to break it. And let me make sure I got that here. Ooh, return with a value. Oh, ouch. Nice catch there, C compiler thing. We don't return anything from here. We just set value equal to this. Um, yeah, good, good catch. One of the few times the compiler has done something useful. So let's see what this does. Do I have a really large... I have a 500-year interval set, don't I? Um, and Which is good if we're going to do it in the final version, but I think for right now we can afford to do this. Um, oh, 
Oh, that worked. Okay. So I have no idea if that's correct or not, but I mean, at least it, it compiled and it ran, uh, which is really all you can hope for. I'm going to go ahead and do a checkpoint save of this code, even though it's not that exciting yet. Okay. So now over here, I decided to look for where the function is equal to zero. That That's fine, but we can do a little bit better than that. We can actually look to see when the function is, for example, greater than zero, meaning uh, Mars is further. And I think we can just put greater than here. And now we'll actually get intervals, which is going to be useful because we can compute how long that happens. And that's going to be a little bit nicer. We could, of course, do these computations ourselves because we know when, you know, when it's... Um, when it's uh, going further and closer, but let's see if we can just say greater than. I'm wondering now if greater than or equal to is a possibility. It should not be um, because there's a uh, there's a weirdness here with greater than or equal to because it really equality it, it, there's a, it's a borderline condition. But let's see what it is. Relate greater than. Okay, good, 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 good. So there is. I don't have a choice to do greater than or equal to. That would be confusing. Okay. And now we actually have a beginning and an end, and we don't need to know if it's so we don't need so what we're gonna do here now is we're gonna print the beginning time, the end time, and the length of time that Mars is further away. Um, and again, by the way, the you know, instead of using percent f, I could use like percent point seventeen f or something to give the to give it to seventeen digits of precision, but but there's no, I mean, these, this, these are one second time intervals. There's no way that even a one second is correct. I could just make this percent D, right, percent zero F, and it would still be pretty much as accurate as it is now. So let's run this again. And I might decrease the distance, the time interval slightly while we're testing, because I want to get a little bit more going here, uh, I think. Uh, and one thing we're going to see that's remarkable, although not to me, because I actually know it's going to happen, is that the length of time that Mars remains further actually changes considerably, um, which would have been which I could have shown if I'd bothered to dump this code somewhere. So let's go ahead and just for a little while, just a little while, just there's a song like that I can't remember what. Let's just go a hundred years um, back and forward from the year twenty hundred. We're going to do a let's do a make here. And let's run the code. And let's see. Wait, I could have timed it, but. Um, and by the way, once again, my time I, I is. I need to do something about this. And I think I have it. There we go. Big jump cut there. Uh, it is now. Pff, wow. And do I have that listed as something I need to do? Yep, I do. Awesome. Okay. So I think I totally missed what we did there. <laughs> All right. Still takes a while, a couple of seconds. But th this is the time, uh, the length of time uh, that um, that Mars remains uh, further away. And you'll notice it varies actually quite a bit. And, and there is a reason for that, and it has to do with the inclination of Mars. And we will talk about that shortly. Uh, but the thing to notice here is the away time is quite different. And if you were to actually look at these beginning times, uh, you would see that, I, well, actually, they might actually follow more of a pattern. Um, because there was some talk about a Sidonic period, which means when Earth and Mars, the Earth, Mars, Sun are lined up, you know, does this pattern of Mars being further and closer repeat every Sidonic period? And the answer is it might not, because the inclination of Mars is, is going to be enough of a problem that it might throw this whole cycle off. Um, but that's for later on. So for right now, we have greater than increasing. And I made a comment earlier that said I could just, I don't know why I have these funky spaces in places they don't belong. I think it's because I cut and pasted code that uh, that does does things this way. But anyway, um, earlier I said I could just um, actually use, uh, you know, just integers. I'm going to go ahead and do that because, you know, we're nowhere near getting accuracy to a fraction. We're not even getting accuracy to a second. Um, and I think this is the correct way of doing it. Uh, and it won't complain if I don't. And this is where it'd be really nice, you know, to actually understand some. See, nope, that's not how we do it. Um, I don't think I can get away with percent %d here. Let me try it, though. d is integer, but I think that's not going to work. 
partly because this might be too big for uh, for an integer. But let's find out. Yeah, that that's not correct, obviously. Um, so I forget how you get. Um, and you know, I could just do this, which I am doing, but I'm going to actually look in here because I know I've done it before. One of the nice things about doing a lot of programming is, um, uh, let's see, percent %f, percent %f. One of the nice things about, so like here, I'm pretty sure that's to 20 digits, which is completely unnecessary. Um, so I think I can do percent %0.0f is what I want to get what I, to get what I need here. Um, so one of the nice things about programming a lot is you can look at your old code and make the same mistakes again instead of having to make new mistakes every time. That's kind of nice. And let's see if this gives me what I want. It does. It's beautiful. Um, so this is from... Now, there's a temptation to put in, like, you know, because you don't really know what this ephemeris time is. I mean, we could find out, but it's not that easy to actually figure out what this ephemeris time is. Um, I could add it to this output. I certainly could add it over here because we, you know, we have like a. In fact, I think we're not even using Tim format anymore and Tim length. Let's get rid of those. If we were uh, wanting to, we could put it into a very nice format um, of the time. But I'm not. I don't really want to do that because that's not really the important part of what's going on here. Um, so I think I'm going to leave it like this, and then. Oh, last time we tried going f like the whole way, we really it took forever, and I don't know if I want to do that. Although, it'd be one hell of a nice result to have. Um, okay, let's see. Um. Well, let's time it with 500 years. And I don't know why I'm doing this, because it's... it's Ultimately, we either, we're either going to do it this way. And... Overwrite. And so with 500 years on either side, 1,000 year window total, uh, the 30,000 years would take... It won't really take 30 times as long, because there's not a linear, uh, linear um, increase here. Uh, but it will take... You know, we can estimate that it'll take about uh, f 14 seconds here. Probably take about you know a few minutes for the for the bigger version. There is one thing we can do to actually I think to really improve this. Um, we can inc increase our step size considerably. Because uh, right now it's a day. We could probably bump this to like 10 days, 20 days, and get the same results. In fact. Let me bump this to 10 days, see if the program runs faster, but I'll put it to another file, and now we can see if, uh, oh, ah, make. And we can see if the, if the, we get the same results faster. Well, those results were quite a bit faster, and now we need to see whether or not we, uh, we missed out on anything. And we didn't. Okay, awesome. Uh, that's because, of course, uh, the distance, the Mars gets further in, you know, like over a period of 800 days. I'm guessing we could bump this sucker up to 100 days, still get the same answer. I am so freaking awesome. Okay, we got a slight time savings there, but not much of one, so, um, I could do a diff 3, but I'm not going to, I'm just going to do this. Cool, the same thing. Okay. So with this kind of speed, we might actually be able to go from S time to E time. I'm always sort of not confident of using a step this large. Um, just, in fact, I don't even like using a step that's 86,400 seconds. That's still pretty large. Uh, but honestly, I think in this case, it does. It's not going to matter. Um, so now what we're going to we're going to do here, we're going to start the write up for this, which is going to be. Now it could be BC comp disk dot text, which that's what I normally do. I don't normally do readmes. So let's start doing this. Um, so the one thing that's gonna that I we need to sort of talk about is the inclination of Mars. We're gonna look at that. We're gonna see why that's important. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's figure out what the inclination of Mars is. By figure out, I mean Google. Um, 
parameters. We could also have just said inclination. Uh, la 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 la. Shiny. Oh, cool. It actually has the earth there too. Sort of shows how that all works. Uh, inclination 1.850 degrees from the ecliptic. That's actually not that bad. Um, so the question is with the uh, inclination of 1.85 degrees, what is, how far is it from the ecliptic? How far can it be from the ecliptic? And the answer to that is going to be, well, let's get it semi-major axis, um, which is 1.5. Oh, do I want it in gigameters or do I want it in astronomical units? Let's, let's go gig gigameters because we're using kilometers as our unit of measure, so a gigameters is a good um, is a good unit because it's very similar to kilometers, obviously. Um, okay, so the question is. Um, how far up above or below the ecliptic can uh, can Mars be? And the answer is this is going to be the, of course, the opposite over the adjacent. This is going to be the uh, tangent of 18.50 degrees times this number, uh, which there's probably a bajillion ways to get it, but um, I was kind of hoping to use the little Mathematica thing that I had earlier. But at this point, I'm just going to say, um, yeah, let's see if I can bring that back up again. This we can probably get rid of. We don't need this anymore. This we need. This we do not need. This we probably do need. Um, this we don't need. This we need temporarily, so I'm not going to save it. Let me see if I can go find... We... Uh, oh, wow, shiny, but not what we need right now. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a... Um, Wolfram Cloud is the magical, and I think I finally saved my password, so we should be able to get in pretty quickly. Um, this is fun. This is, I don't know why it does this. It's really freaking annoying. Um, and I'm trying to get away from it now. I don't know. I don't know why it does that. That's just kind of weird. Okay. I think I have some existing... Um, oh, no. Oh no, 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 I didn't mean to do that. I have some existing uh, stuff here, but I don't actually know how to use it, so I'm going to always go for a new notebook. Maybe I should start saving these. Okay, so we want the tangent of 1.805 degrees. I want to kind of see what that number is, by the way, just for fun. Okay, that's not actually as big as I thought it was going to be. And we're going to multiply that by... Uh, Mathematic Mathematica does actually in, in understand uh, uh, units like gigameters. We're not actually going to use them, though. So we're going to do it like this. And shift return. Remember, anyone can access this. So it looks like uh, it's going to be about 7.36 million kilometers uh, that it can be above or below the ecliptic. So I'm actually... Um, Come on, cut and paste. There we go. Okay, and of course, because this is Emacs, Control Y is the way to get the uh, paste above um, million kilometers, which, by the way, is exactly the same as a gigameter. Um, above or below ecliptic, and I was thinking this would be causing a problem, but now I'm beginning to wonder if it it won't actually cause a problem. Um, all right. Well, let's 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 find out over here. Let's go back over here. Ah, <sighs> uh, man. Let's see. I'm gonna go with 100 over here, and I'm gonna we are gonna also look at the differences between how often it does this. So, if we miss something, there's actually a, a reasonable chance that we will. Um, that we will find what we're missing. Okay. And so make you see comp dist and I'll call it final, although the odds that this is actually going to be final are very low. And also I probably should have started screen so I could do other things while this is running. Uh, this will take a little bit of time to run. While it's doing that, um, Let's just banter. 
Um, I think there's something else we're going to be doing here, which is we want to, um, right. Um, I often want to convert between ephemeris time and like what we'd call clock time. And I do have a function to do it, but I don't have a program that does it. So I was thinking about writing a really very quick brief program that converted ephemeris time to like uh, Unix time or to like uh, uh, date time, sort of, a, sort of a calendar time, and so on and so forth. So I was going to do that uh, now, except I'm not going to, because I don't want to. Um, it's not that hard to write, obviously, but I just don't want to do it right now. Let me see if there's any users in chat I can bother. Oh, hello, Community Showcase. I don't think you're a real user, but okay. Oh, I probably shouldn't have said your name, but since you sound like a uh, non-real user, um, I will say hello to you. So please feel free to um, say something in chat while we're waiting for this program. Oh, that is amazing. It took one minute. And we actually got it. So now, let's see how big this is, first of all. Because if it's small enough, I can just... Um, oh, it's very small. Um, let's make sure it goes... Okay, so negative... All the way positive. Okay, cool. And the first and last results are not going to be accurate because the uh, the start and end times will, will go past the, the beginning and end. So that, that we can ignore, but that's fine. Okay. Um, I don't know if we want to put this in there into the into the GitHub exactly as it is, so I'm going to do my famous um, create a directory just for today, so it doesn't so this doesn't go away, and then we're going to move. Or let's just copy temp uh, comp dist final to here. So now, uh, so now that we're going to look at here, except for the first and last, which we know are going to be uh, non non proportionate, I want to kind of look at. Um, these values here and see how much they vary from like you know 498 blah 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 uh, and then they get pretty uh, we could sort them by by value of course but they get they change quite a lot and so there's sort of a question as to why they change like that um, and then the other the other thing we need to know is the time between when uh, when we have uh, you know the uh, the Mars is closer starts being closer uh, stops being closer. In fact, what we probably want is the midpoint of these times, uh, which is pretty close to where Mars will have its perigee, its closest approach to Earth. Um, so we can do that as well. Um, but the whole sort of cool thing I want to do with this, and it'll probably fail so badly that I will cry like a little girl, and I've been practicing, um, because I'm going to try to get this file into fake Mathematica so we can do some analysis with it, so we can look at uh, you know how these times vary. All this good stuff that I could do normally with Mathematica on my main machine, hopefully we can do it here. So now let me see if I can uh, file, new notebook, browse cloud files, download, print to PDF, duplicate, um, everything except upload, huh? Uh, let's see. Browse cloud files. Well, actually, hang on. Um, well, oh, to access this feature, subscribe to our freaking plan. So this is uh, not going as well as I hoped. Uh, but we can still work with it, by the way. Uh, let's see. Great new notebook, home. I wonder how much a plan costs. Far too much. Actually, I, I should have at least one for free. Mm, home and hobby. Mother fudger. That's not going to happen. Okay. So, this is a little bit uglier, but we can still do this. And please excuse me as I, uh, as I, uh, I get pop-ups here that you can't see, but I need to deal with. Not really, I mean, I just ignore them, but I, that still counts as dealing with them. Okay, so what we can do here with this um, CompDist final, we can actually convert it into something Mathematica can understand, and then in theory we can paste it in there, in, into the into the uh, into the uh, into the web browser. As to whether or not we can really do that, mm, I don't know. Let's find out. We're going to place space with comma everywhere. Um, and now what we need to do is each of these needs to be encapsulated into brackets. So do a query replace regex 
the beginning of the line with one of these curly bracket things. Not this one, but every other one. Da -da 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 -da. And I could hit exclamation point to do all of them. But I, you know what? I do need to hit that. Okay, so we'll do that. Fix it over here. And for the end part, we need um, a close brace and a comma. So query replace regular expression. Dollar sign. Da, da, da. Not this one, not this one. This one, yes, and all the way to the end, except a little bit of cleanup here. So not, not ideal. Not, not ideal. No matching parentheses found. Well, don't know what to tell you. Data equals this, 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 this all the way to the end and this um, this is 14,236 lines so honestly I don't know if it's going to be able to cut and paste uh, save text until okie dokie I'll be freaking impressed if this actually works so I did have control V and I have no idea if it's just thinking or if it's uh, if I've choked it too much. A web page, we're gonna wait. And this actually might be just way too large to do anything with. Yeah. So while we're doing that, since we have results now. Now we can start saying all sorts of cool things that are technically true but not very useful. So let's go ahead and do that. Over here. Oh. That's not what I meant to do. I meant to go here and then do bccompdist.txt. Where we have a little bit of stuff going on here. Okay. So now we know the, uh, the difference. We can figure out how much time and I kind of regret rounding off these seconds, but honestly, I don't think it's going to matter. Uh, we can we can add up the total amount of time that Mars is uh, further away, uh, because each we can add up these basically. Uh, we know that's the, th the third field, which Pro calls the second field. We can add that up. sum plus equals dollar sign, and then print the sum, and of course we only really care about the last one. Um, hoping that I'm not killing uh, Pearl's uh, uh, Mars is further, and how much, what is the total amount of time uh, that we covered in our program? And that we can see is S time minus E time, because we use those, and S time and E time are um, this number and again, I don't know if this is going to choke because it, these numbers might be too big. But uh, this number. And again, unfortunately, because of this stupid thing, it needs it needs quotation marks. My version does not. And that number seems actually sort of accurate. And so now the cool thing we can do here is uh, divide these two numbers and say Mars is further away this amount of time. Uh, and we will do that. But, and that's going to give us a really exact number. There's a problem with this number that we're about to get. 78% um, of the time, very, very close to the answers other people are getting. And that's not what I meant to do. Once more, please. Okay, and right now we're just making notes. We're going to clean this up a little bit here. So about 78% of the time Mars is further away. But there's a problem with this. Um, it, it's a minor problem because, you know, there's enough instances of Mars being further away. In fact, there are, just count them, in fact, 14,233 instances of Mars being away. Um, Mars is further so, so it's not a huge deal, but, but the problem is um, the boundaries of DE431 plus minus 15,000 years from today, or now roughly, um, 
doesn't necessarily align with what we would call like the Sidonic period of Mars or something like that. In other words, it's possible that we, we have a bias because our time starts or ends uh, when Mars is closer or further away or something. We don't really, we, we sort of want to uh, use a, compl a total complete number of, of periods instead of using the sort of, um, you know, having the start and end periods, like I said, are they're weird. And in fact, now that I think about it, now that I said that, um, Uh, yeah, we should have actually not, what the hell? Oh, right, because we're, uh, I should have actually excluded the first and the last, because those are special and last. So I actually need to do, uh, this number minus the very first interval, because the first interval is short, because it actually started before the beginning of when we were, s when our, what our time was, and the, in the end one is going to be, have a similar issue here, um, because it sort of ends at the, uh, at the wrong time. So I think using this, we actually can get a, a fairly good estimate. Um, and that number is this, and it's going to be very, very similar, because it's not, you know, th this is a very small number. Yay! So let me cut and paste what this is. I think Emacs, by the way, also has a uh, calculator, so I could have done this all in Emacs if I so chose. So actual percentage is, and if this number is very different, I'll be very surprised. Uh, and again, the problem here is our start and end times um, might not be what we want, because th there's going to be some overlapping and underlapping um, there. Since actually now that we've removed the first and last ones, I think we need to go from, yes, I think we need to go uh, from the, the time we need to go from is, um, so the very first one we start counting is here, and then we need to go to the, um, we don't, there is one before that, but see, this is actually just the beginning of time. This is, it would be further negative if it could be. And we want to end it uh, just before the last one, uh, because that would be sort of a full cycle of starting to almost starting again. Actually, I'm not sure that that's correct now that I say that. Uh, let's see. So that would be starting, 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 thinking, thinking, thinking. I'm going to check to see what my license um, allows me to do and see if I can install Mathematica here. I, I think I'm allowed to. I don't, I don't know, but I'll, I'll check. And there's also a technical issue of how to do it if I'm allowed to do it. Okay, so this would be, um, yeah, this would be the beginning of a new uh, Mars' further cycle. And the first one was also the beginning of a Mars' further cycle. So this is, uh, this sort of fixes the quote-unquote Sidonic period issue uh, by giving us a fair number of, of, uh, of periods in which this happens. And again, the number is not going to change by a significant amount. So it's this, minus, minus, so we can just use plus, this, or we could just mess that up. Um, and that gives us this number here is the actual period which is, again, you'll notice a little bit smaller than the full, full period that we had here about. Maybe it's a lot smaller, but anyway, this total number. So our final answer will be um, so that's the number we're actually going to use, and I think the two divisions, the two subtractions will mean we get almost exactly the same result. And let's run this in here. And, uh, you know, if it's different, it's different in like a 774 yeah, it's different in the fifth digit, so it's not really going to be a huge issue. Okay, um, so the next thing we kind of want to look at now is, um, you know, with the exception of the first and last, which we know are broken, how long does Mars stay further away from, in, in sort of a, as on an as-period basis, how long is that? So, we can do a sort minus uh, K3N, third key, third column, numeric sort, 
and let's see what we get. And again, the first one's not going to count, but um, uh, and I, the last one doesn't count either. So it goes from as little as, which will convert to days in just a second, and it can go as big as. Yeah, see, this seems to be more of a. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's not that big of a difference. Um, and of course, the way to find out would be, uh, be. This is correct, but we kind of like to measure our things in days. Um, and so we'll say days. Obviously, we're not going to use all of this precision here. And for the max. Because I'm really bad at sort of telling how many days that is. It might be that these numbers are actually much closer than I thought. Well, actually, they're not. 648 days. Um, so the sort of question is, we have to explain why this is. Why is it that um, that Mars stays further away for sort of a variable period of time? The other thing we're going to be sort of interested in is the difference in times when Mars starts being further away. That would be the uh, this column minus this column. And we can get that as well. Yeah, give me a sec here. Using the magic of Perl. And when in doubt, just do this. And I for right now, I'm just going to print the, because I just want, OK. So the way we can do this is, and obviously, the first one's going to be wrong, as always. Uh, we can say, dollar sign f0 minus dollar sign x and then assign dollar sign x to dollar sign f0 for the next time and if this works we should have again the first result will be incorrect um, so this is what they were they're calling the sedonic period the amount of time between um, mars starting to be further away starting to be further away again and these numbers are not looking great to me we will go ahead and sort them and so, okay, something tells me this number is wrong. It comes from like the, the very first one that we're ignoring. So, uh, Sedonic, and it's not really the Sedonic, it's the period of, uh, so this, this confuses me a little bit. Let's go over here. I think the last number is going to be two, but it doesn't matter because they're very close. Um, and these numbers look closer to me than the first two, but I'm, like I said, really bad at doing this kind of math in my head. So, although I could just divide by 100,000 because that is pretty close to 86,400. So 760.96 days to, and let's see what this number is. I'm hoping it's, it's close, I'm hoping it's close because we, we kind of hope that this happens at a regular interval. Uh, 814 days, not that regular. Okay. Um, and the, um, okay, so this is the uh, Sedonic based on Mars further. Actual Sedonic period. Mars has an orbital period of shiny. Um, and by the way, this is actually going to be something I want to use here. This Mars in our night sky is not very, very rarely hits the, the, per the perigee that of the minimum possible perigee and what is its uh, period orbital period here uh, oh it even have the Sedonic here 779.9 uh, compared to earth obviously I think pretty sure better be um, and that's actually right between these two numbers so that's actually good um, so the question is um, why are we seeing this sort of weird behavior of, of Mars, um, that it goes further. It, it has to do with the inclination, I, I'm almost sure, because that's the only, literally the only other thing that changes uh, aside from its, you know, its position around the sun. Uh, because the, uh, the uh, Sedonic period is um, 779, and the um, orbital period is 640-something. Let's get that, though. 687 days. I wonder if that number is like, yeah, that number is not really anywhere in here. Um, this means every time we have a sort of an orbital syzygy, that's a big word, uh, with Mars, 
it occurs at a different point in Mars orbit and therefore at a di different inclination uh, of Mars. Um, so the very best we can do is if Mars happens to be in the ecliptic plane, uh, when we are at syzygy with it, uh, we have the closest approach possible. And there's also a little bit of, uh, you know, there might be shifting of Mars orbit a little bit. Uh, but that's, uh, that's, that's what we're doing here. Um, so a lot of this is not going to go into our final answer, uh, unless you're watching this video, which will be referenced in the final answer. Um, but let's see what we can say. Um, okay. What I really want to do is find the time interval between perigees of Mars. And I, I don't know if uh, that someone has calculated that. approaches. And I don't know if someone has a table of that. Oh, that's also in orbit of Mars. Um, perihelic opposition, my god. Uh, close approaches to Earth. Um, other planets, uh, it's 56 versus uh, these just have been declining at the 55th. Okay, but this is a um, from perspective, the path to Mars is simple. For high level of, uh, that's not really helping us any. So this does just tells us sort of the closest approach possible, not the, uh, not the regular. Okay, so this is actually um, one perihelic opposition. Uh, oh my God. Um, Uh, 780 decent oppositions. Um, yeah, that's interesting. Okay. Uh, um, so, So we can go ahead and publish some of these facts, but it's it's just kind of weird um, to say that uh, you know um, Mars starts getting further away between 700 every 716 to 814 days uh, with a Sedonic period of 700 79.9 days, um, and it stays further away for that. These are some weird freaking numbers. Um, and I, I don't see why they keep changing like this. Um, and then the real sort of question is, I almost want to write a program to see how often Mars is at perigee. Uh, and I don't think it would be a constant number. Um, so we're going to fudge a little bit when we answer this, and we're going to just talk about it's the inclination that's doing this. Um, and also, actually, of course, um, Mars is perihelion and aphelion. So in fact, this is actually what this is saying, I think. Um, uh, because if Mars is at aphelion when it's at syzygy with Earth, and Earth is, Earth is actually has a pretty stable orbit, uh, so it'll be further away then. Uh, but if it's at you know, perigee, so, these, these are, so this is what they mean by the perihelic opposition. That's when, ooh, shiny, they have a little diagram here. Um, yeah, OK, perihelic. It's closest to, does this redirect to something? No, perihelion, no, okay. Mars is closer to the sun and particularly close to Earth. Oppositions range from about to only point is near, oh my god. So that is a huge difference. Um, that, that would explain, so a lot of this is because, because Mars has an ecliptic orbit and it doesn't always, um, you know, when we are at the same angle from it as the sun, um, it doesn't always, it's not always at perihelion, it could be at aphelion. That seems like a really big difference though. But it might not be, because it, it has a much bigger orbit than, than we do. Okay. Alright, let's go ahead and write this up now. And blah 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 blah. I wrote, um, uh, short answer. Mars is further from the Earth than the Sun. Oh, uh, let's not write it in that way. 
the Earth is closer to the Sun than to Mars. 70, 70, about 77.9% of the time. Uh, details. Uh, methodology, always nice to have that in there. I wrote, and of course we could, we can't just give them the, uh, we have to tell them where it is in Git. Um, uh, what do we call it, CompDist? Yeah, we did. Um, and let's see, so I wrote it, blah, 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 and found over, okay, now how am I going to express this, um, over a period of Here's how we impress people. Instead of saying, oh, you know what, actually, I, I wanted to impress people, but now I want to kind of make this number more accessible. I hate myself for being so nice. Okay. Still a lot. And that number needs to be rounded up. Over a period of about... Nope, it's 11 million days. Mars was further... Oh, actually, this needs to be a 2. And actually, why don't we just go ahead and give it as 0.65. And... So, what was the final number we're going to divide by? Is this number right here. Eight million of these days. I'm tempted now to say um, seconds, but let's leave it like this. Uh, okay. Um, well, that's really how I did it. Uh, well, let's give it a little bit more here. To compute when and how long Mars was further from Earth than the Sun, do I actually want to say it the other way around? Yeah, how long... I no, will say it this way. Mars was further from the Earth than the Sun. Uh, how long Mars... When and how long? In the... Approximately 30,000 year period period covered by DE431, is it? I always forget which one. It's DE, it's, it's, it's the big one. <laughs> That'll help them. Uh, let's see, standard TM, I think it's a more short DE31, but let's make sure. DE... I'll remove for testing, DE431. Um, uh, let's see. In the 30,000 year period covered by DE431, this happens. Um, tempted to say approximately because I don't really want to. Uh, 14,000. This happens 14 times. With an average length. For an average duration. For a duration, for an average duration of so now we need to say uh, okay uh, 
this number over, and I really now need to say 14,231 times, because those are the only ones I can count. Um, and that's seconds, so let's divide that by 607.93 days. Um, the average duration between average duration of 600 and that actually should be and I'm going to say 14,231 um, 3,000 this happens for dura average duration of um, the duration between <laughs> the average duration between when this happens um, followed by, so this is going to be a subtraction now, it's going to be so what did we say the average Sedonic based on this was um, did we actually come up with that? Let's see I want to be careful here because we did look at the average. We didn't. We actually didn't look at the um, um, average duration of. Well, I guess we could. Um, I want to be careful here. Actually, in the thirty thousand years, this happens for an average duration of six hundred seven point nine three days. And that is the sum um, that's this number divided by fourteen thousand two hundred thirty one yeah okay great and now the average um, so we have fourteen thousand two hundred thirty one start times so, so this number is actually between starts so um, so it's going to be, oh Jesus Christ, it's going to be this number minus this number, and then we're going to divide by the 14,231 times we are, uh, we are duration-wise as we have, and of course, our version of calc, I'm pretty sure I've got something that says fix that, and of course we want that in days, so an average time of 172.00 days, very nice, I like that. Um, by 100, an average, average, followed by an average of 172.00 days where Mars is closer. Okay, let's make sure the sentence reads correctly. Uh, in the 30,000 year period, this happens 14 for an average duration, followed by an average of 170, where Mars is, is closer. Now to make sure I'm not saying something stupid, let me make sure that if I add these two numbers together and divide, I do not get something stupid. 607.93, I mean, I don't think I will, but so it's going to be 607.93 over blah. Seriously, seriously going to fix that soon. 77.9, which is what I said. Yep. Good deal. Okay. Um... I think we can include some notes in here. Um, even though technically these would go under notes, I think we can just put them in here. Um, and here's where we can sort of say, um, uh, blah, 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 blah. Where do we have our extrema? Um, come on, we have some nice dots numbers here too, don't we? Oh, here we are. So, there we are. The actual, t um, the actual amount of time, actual duration, Mars is further 
varies from 546.55 days to 648.1 days. Um, the time between time between when Mars is further away, which is actually we're not giving the information uh, how long it is closer, but I'm going to sort of gloss over that. Uh, it should be computable because we it's going to be the remainder of that time. And I was hoping if we could get Mathematica in there, we, we actually could have done a pretty good job with uh, with uh, at computing those times. Um, the duration between when Mars, the time duration, Mars is further away, the Sedonic period, well, let's see, um, varies from 760.96 days to 814.51 days. The Sedonic period, the Earth Mars Sedonic period, is 779.9 days. Um, both variances above can be explained by the eccentricity of Mars orbit. And I want to make sure that's actually correct before I say that. Um, yeah. Th wow, that is really high. By the eccentricity of eccentricity of Mars orbit. But yeah, belonging to Mars. And here we'll just quote the Wikipedia page. We might want to do, this, yeah, Mars orbit. As noted in this, uh, we'll just do this in line. Even Mars's perigee um, varies from. I don't want to say that. That's not actually accurate. We're just going to say that this is. Uh, um, the Earth-Mars distance, when the Sun-Earth-Mars are lined up, uh, the, oh my god, um, helix syzygy. That's, that's a word I don't even want to use. Let's just see if the word syzygy has the meaning I think it does. I'm almost sure it does. Ah. Uh, yeah, the nearest straight line couldn't figure this what I wanted it to mean. Um, varies considerably. I'm not going to use the word syzygy. Um, both variances above can be explained. As noted in blah 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 blah, the Mars distance uh, varies considerably. Um, so the time it takes time it takes to get so the time it takes Mars to get further than the Sun varies okay anything else we want to stick in here yes we do uh, that is this answer here is is going to be um, this is going to be an exact copy um, I think I can shove this in here. And the videos. And the videos of these. And the videos are available. We don't need to say. Are available. At, and I'm going to use the same thing I did for the other one. Which was, uh, I don't remember. But I have it. Um, come on, where's my YouTube?
and I don't need a colon there. With the titles, what did I call this? Um, something like uh, Mars, Earth, Sun, Distance or something. Mm. I'm going to cheat and go back to my actual Twitch here where I am. Um, edit stream info. No, we're not editing it. We're just copying. Oh, we can't do that, can we? Earth, <laughs> because it's in the wrong freaking place. And I'm not going to watch myself watch myself. So let's just quickly do this. Go over to me. Uh, yeah. Come on, Jesus Christ. Seriously? Okay, let's do this. Okay. And now let's make sure we've covered everything we want to cover. Um, so it turns out the Mars' tilt uh, is not that big of a deal. Um, we probably should keep these numbers. I'm not going to, but... Um, actually, I probably should have kept them. Let me do that, actually. I'm going to... I'm going to push this to GitHub in case we ever need these numbers again, delete them, and then print this as an answer. And I see we've been streaming for about an hour. I'm going to do a little bit more. I'd like to create a KML file of the world population centers and then um, see if we can view it using stuff I already have. Okay. So now we can get rid of all this crap. And uh, this is actually not a very long answer, which is which is good, which is very good. Um, Seventy. See, see, these people are almost exactly right. Um, so I could have put something in here like, uh, as noted by others, That's, but I won't. 77 <laughs> I wrote to da 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 da. Um, blah 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 blah. I'm bored. Let's just post this. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I think I'm happy with that. Or if I'm not, I'll be unhappy with it later. Um, okay, so let's go back now to the other problem that we had. Um, I wanted to write a KML file, and in, so let's actually just look at the file we're, we're talking about here, and that I think is in uh, Center of World, Cal. Um, um, and I'm kind of tempted to do both depths and no depths, but maybe we just need to do one, really. Um, okay. And so how do we create a KML file? Well, I've, I've done it before. So this should not be too difficult. Um, in fact, I might have a program that does it, but if not, we can write one that's not very hard. So let's find... Anything with the word KML in it. Except that. Oh my god, why the hell do I have that in there? That is hideous. Um, I mean, those files do need to be on BC Info 3. They don't need to be in the Git, though. But clearly, I hate everybody, and I put them in there. They're not big. They're just kind of unnecessary. OK, so now let's do it without the uh, the BEC files in there. Um, KML head, KML foot, um, BC display KML, which is what we're going to use to show it. Um, OK, I swear to god, these. Uh, Emacs dropping is going to kill me. Land cover, KML head, KML. I wrote a library. That's nice of me. Um, and it's not really that hard. Is is one of the it was one of the issues. Oh, and I also have a KML foot. Okay, 
So why don't we look at these? And I think these are exactly um, exactly the the part we we we. Um, um, these are the parts that are just at the very beginning, at the end. Um, okay. <sighs> Sorry, this is too annoying. Mother of God. Okay. And if I did delete anything important, which I shouldn't because this is part of my git ignore, uh, then git will tell me about it. So let's take a look at... I mean, it's, the KML files are so simple in, in nature, I don't really... Uh, okay, this is actually not my KML file, but... Um, uh, let me actually find one that I wrote. Because my style is freaking ugly. I swear to God. And I know I wrote Metrovore for somebody doing something else. Some days, just not worth chewing through the ropes, as a famous comedian says. Uh, let's look at Metro Vore, and I'm going to actually be sort of obnoxious here, and because this is um, this is pretty much the uh, the chunk of what an HTML file is: name, description, point. That's it. Um, I'm going to be a little bit obnoxious here and see if I can show you what this file looks like, because it's part of an other project that I will probably never finish, um, because I am opposed to finishing projects. And I'm going to try to find it here. Image overlay. Okay, and I obviously I can't find it over here, but let's see if I can get it from here. Um, yeah, unfortunately... And this is written on the server. It is on my... It is on my um, I, I am going to guess this isn't going to work. I'll be damned it did. Okay. Um, I'm going to bookmark this, not because this particular um, bookmark is that important, but because it, it represents a more general um, sort of importance. So what I did here... Gosh, I'm clever. So what I did here is... Um, it actually solves a Reddit problem. This is the... Um, the 50 largest metropolitan areas in in um, in the United States, and they are not necessarily cities; they are metropolitan areas. I believe Albuquerque is going to be listed as. Uh, is, is it actually listed? No, it's not one of the biggest ones. Um, so someone was asking, basically, what if we took the uh, the 50 largest metropolitan areas in the United States and we use those as our capitals, and then we use Vernoy diagrams to determine. Um, which uh, where everything be belongs so what would how would that change the population so this these the big the big bright markers here are the 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 um, large metropolitan areas the smaller blue dots here are um, cities that fall within the Vernoy region of a given or these are just the cities that happen to fall within uh, a region of of within a given region. So if you were to add up all these cities, you could figure out what the new population of the city now known as Kansas City would be. Oh, come, come on, find one without the word city in it. Phoenix, my good friend Phoenix here, and all that. So this is, uh, again, just um, a KML diagram with an overlay, not very exciting, um, but it does show that it's, it's not that hard to create KML diagrams. So oh, well, Seattle, Tacoma, Bellevue, three cities there. So anyway, that's that's uh, that's how we create a KML document. So now we're going to go ahead and oh man, we're create KML.pl in Perl. Always one nice thing uh, that I found is surprisingly helpful. Even these two lines are going to be in every Perl program I write. It's actually sort of nice to put them down because you're not staring at an empty screen anymore. Um, so let's see. And uh, da, 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 da. what's the file we want? Damn it, I need to add that alias. It's going to be piece. We're just going to use one of these BC pop centers. No depths. CSV. 
and I think we're not going to be able to put in a whole lot of information because we don't have it here and we don't necessarily need it. Um, and it's not it's not the interesting information. Um, so I'm going to read file, and I always, there's got to be a better way to do this. So if someone knows a better way of doing this, let me know. And we can change this to the other one if we need to. Um, and we're going to split that on the new line. Let's make sure this actually is doing something. And we're going to focus on printing out the center, and then we can the KML foot and the um, the footer and the header we can do really easily. So first of all, this program needs to be chamotted. And I'm almost worried that because we're doing an SSHFS, it's not going to route that rehash, BC, create KML. And then another worry I have is uh, create KML. So this is it. I was worried that I had another program with this exact same name. So, and I think this is actually, this closes off the four. All right, let's see what this does. Can't open. Oh. And of course, I mean BC lib git home. Again, this is the one thing that I would really like to normalize so other people can use my libraries without having to know where the heck I keep everything or having to make their structure look like mine. But whatever. Okay, fantastic. Um, and we're going to go ahead and give names to each of these fields and I'm just going to copy one of them as an example. Western Samoa used to be part of the United States, I think. Now American Samoa still is. So that's CC2, CC3. We're not going to use all of these. Name, ln, lat, our value. And I think the last one is pop and endpoints. Um, and that, of course, is split on comma, then he spaces after it, of dollar sign i. Okay. Um, now, I think I'm going to probably round the population off to the nearest integer. I don't see that's going to be a problem. Um, number of points. I don't know if that's going to be really useful here. It would be really useful if we were overlaying a map that showed which points were considered to be part of a given country. Um, so I don't know if I'm going to do that. I, I'm trying to see if there's anything else uh, I can really put in here that's useful, and I don't see that there is. So let's go straight to it. Let's look at the other KML file I had. Yeah, it would also be useful if I kept my paths correct. All right, blah, 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 blah. And I think I never use these styles. Um, um, yeah. So let's just do this. This is pretty ghetto. This is using the here document format that Perl has. Um, and maybe it can be a little bit nice. And so I could put the word center of population here, but since that's what this map is about, I don't really care. Um, uh, description, and maybe we will be nice, and, um, do we really care? I mean, we could have actually put in here, uh, so we'll just put pop, pop. We could have put in here the coordinates as well, just in case, um, just in case someone wanted them. Uh, but I mean, obviously, they're going to be on the map directly anyway. Uh, now, by printing this KML file, we will also need to put a to-do here. Um, update answer. Also look for cool things like uh, center of pop in other country or in water. So it's possible because we're looking at the center of the population, which is a theoretical point. It could end up in a really silly place for a given country. And then we could probably do another version for, um, for yeah. And then to do another version for non depths and I'm almost tempted here to put a like a, um, a, a not a symlink 
a web link to Wikipedia page for this. But again, way too much. So it's going to be long. The zero just means uh, not, you know, at, at, at elevation level, not above the earth. Okay. So then, I'm going to be impressed if this works exactly as I expect it to. KML head. And then KML foot. Boy, <laughs> I'm going to be really, really surprised if this works on the first go. Yep. It's only two, two of these for the here documents. Blah, 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 blah. I could probably put some new lines in there and I probably need to... Oh, yeah, the first line is actually uh, a header line. <laughs> Um, and how do we identify the header line? Uh, it doesn't really matter which one we're, we're going to do. The header line, okay, if CC2 is actually equal to CC2, uh, so we'll split it up. If CC2 equals as a string CC2, we're going to skip that line. Fantastic. Okay. So it didn't work the first time, so I guess I'm correct. I want to add a couple of new lines here just to be nice. Um, I'm going to add one new line. So there we are. Place mark Andorra, population, and I said I was going to round off the population, and I think I will, and I might even, it's kind of nice to format it in, um, in a, um, in with commas and stuff, but I don't think I care that much. Let's do this. Um, and I think we're golden. So now, if this is correct, this is actually ready to go KM, uh, ready to go KML file. Let me quickly run it through, um, yeah, no warnings are ever found. Okay, so this is a valid KML file. Uh, now we just need a name for it. And what are we doing here with the uh, op centers? Well, you know what? We might as well just call it BC pop centers. Uh, which one is this? This is no depths, right? Yeah, no depths. That KML. That's all we really need. And I think it's small enough that I can. I mean, I obviously, it doesn't. It needs to be in BC Info 3's uh, data directory before I can actually use it, uh, uh, because I can't really use it from here. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that, but it's small enough. I don't mind duplicating it in a couple of places. So this is going to be BC git BC info three sites data. Is that where I have all? That's where I have all the other ones. Now then, now I need to sync stuff over to to BC info three, and I can't do it from this machine because it doesn't have the proper trust. So I'm going to go back to my main machine, Shiny, uh, to do this. This would only take a few hundred hours, uh, maybe uh, a couple of days. So uh, hopefully, obviously, I was just joking about that, and I will blather while it does this. And let's go ahead and get, oh, this is actually on the right page, even. Okay, so now we just need to change MetroVore to whatever the hell I called it, um, which was some name that's longer than it should be. Okay, BC Pop Centers, no depths, KML. And will this work? <laughs> I don't know. You tell me. Okay, interesting, interesting, interesting. And I want to go back to the sort of the map here. Um, so did it work? I don't know, maybe. Um, so Venezuela, that actually doesn't look too bad. What the hell is this country out here? Bermuda, and it has a little triangle around it. Um, Cape Verde. That's a country? I don't know how it got to be a country. Someone should look into that. And because this is no depths, I didn't realize the Falkland Islands were this far to the south, but there's a uh, Chile. And you'll notice a lot of the times, interesting, they're near big cities as you would sort of expect. 
Um, and in, like here, they're not because there's Bolivia has another really big city in it somewhere. Uh, and I think these are the two big cities sort of between them, which is what you would expect. Um, and in the other cases where, you know, it's um, French. The French Guinea is a country. Is it? it? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe it's part of something. Uh, maybe. Suriname. Ghana. The only thing I don't like about these, uh, these uh, markers is they're freaking huge. And um, you'll notice in my Metrovor, they were, uh, some of them were smaller. I don't really want 200 of these big, huge things on the map. Whoa. The Russian Federation. Um, so really, nothing super unexpected. This is Andorra, by the way. Yay. Um, nothing super unexpected. And we can see here that Iceland has easily the furthest north, uh, the furthest north uh, center of population. And if we zoom in a little bit, we'll see it's fairly, it's actually a little bit north of Reykjavik, which is in the southern part of the country. Uh, which is fine. And the Faroe Islands are dependencies, so they don't show up in this map. So the only thing I want to change about this is I think I want to change those big freaking arrows into um, those big freaking balloons into points. And um, at this point you might think, hey, aren't you being a little bit um, aren't you being a little bit uh, stupid? And the answer is, aren't you being a little bit picky, stupid? And the answer is yes, I am. And that's how I'm going to do it. Um, okay, so I actually created a style <laughs> called Micropolitan. God, I'm funny. Uh, and I'm using that style URL to, to do this magic there. Um, I think I do want to use that, though. I think I'm, I, I do, I do want to use the, uh, the smaller arrows here. So here, um, I'm not going to call it Micropolitan, but, but we will go ahead and put it in here. And that's not what I meant to do. Undo, undo. I have to put it over here. Uh, style pop center, and it's basically the only difference is we're going to use the blue measel <laughs> from Google Maps. Um, one unfortunate thing here is um, I really could start using OpenStreetMaps for this stuff. I really don't need to be using Google Maps for this stuff. Um, I am, I could transfer over easily, but for right now, it's just easier to stick with Google Maps. So we will do that. And this is, of course, going to be a print. And you can reuse mark because it's not OK. And then over here, um, let's just see how we use it. I think it's just basically with the uh, style URL, is we just need to add one line to this, which is, uh, I, don't even, I don't even think it has to be below your mama. Well, it doesn't have to be below your mama. Um, pop center. So let me go ahead and recreate that. And we'll just copy over that. Okay. And we're going to sync it. If this works, we're definitely going to push to Git because we're getting a little bit behind on that. And after we push it to Git, we're going to create the, uh, the no depths version, or whatever. Yay, blue measles. I love blue measles. No, I'm sorry. I love the blue man group. Um, it's like a disease, actually. Columbo. And I was going to do my impression of Columbo, but it's so bad I decided it would offend Peter Falk. India has a really he high population, so the, the center of population is not necessarily near a big city. Um, this is probably Beijing, I think. Very close to Beijing, maybe? No, actually it's not. Um, because I guess it's got a lot of big cities that are spread out, too. Uh, obviously, for Japan, is that Tokyo? I'm going to guess. No, it's not, actually. It's a little bit far from Tokyo. Sort of between Tokyo and Nagoya. Um, okay, so now we're going to go ahead and create the... Um, and let's see... And we'll maybe add this to the... I need to also add a, the link to the video of uh, population dependencies. Mm. So I need to make two changes to that, that post. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and create the one now for... Um, so there's Iceland way, way up. And I, I'm kind of curious as to where the Svard and... I think this is the Svard and Jemeyer or whatever, blah, 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 blah. There it is. They are. 
this is where um, long year being that's where the it's going to be when I do the ones with no dependencies so now let's um, quickly um, so by default we're using no depths which I think was also true uh, treat dependencies as separate countries because I don't really want oh hang on I said it was going to BC get this so let me do that real quick so BC gets my shortcut to push to get. All right, all nice and pushed up, or at least saved to my local git, which means I can push it anytime I want. Okay. If glob ops um, depths. Um, So let's actually just give this, make this the um, F name, but we can overwrite it if there's, I'm going to set this, semicolon, um, almost exactly the same thing, but this time with depths. And uh, cool, if we get Johnny Depp to do this. Uh, he actually seems like a pretty cool guy, despite the fact that women swoon over him um, so this would be read file f name and I don't really care if it works with the old one I mean it should but that's not what we care about here so now BC create pop centers with depths uh, minus minus depths let's make sure it actually did something Booyah. And of course, most of these are going to be the same. Uh, as n there's nothing, there's nothing really surprising about that. Copy this into uh, into where the server can see it, and push it to the server, which you cannot see me do here. Um, I have the alias here. It's not going to work though because I don't have the correct uh, the correct uh, private and public keys. That was quicker than it should have been. So let's see if this is still working. Well, there's no reason it shouldn't. Um, with depths. Shiny. Almost the same thing, by the way. Um, it's really this nice little chunk of dependent Caribbean nations that now have their own little centers of population, which is silly because they're such tiny things to begin with. Guadalupe. Dominica. Let me check on my good friend the Pope here. I don't actually know the Pope, and in the, except in the sense that, you know, if you're Catholic, we all know God, God knows the Pope, transitive property. Uh, let's see if we can get both of the little tiny countries that are near inside of Rome. San Marino is the other one. Ooh, I don't think I see San Marino. So this is probably the Vatican, the Holy See of Vatican City. And, uh-oh, we might not have San Marino in here. Bummer. And you really have to zoom in to see that Vatican City is this tiny little thing, in, uh, totally enclaved by Rome. Okay, so the big to-do for this is still we need to update my answer with uh, uh, these uh, KML files, uh, and we need to update the answer with the uh, the video, uh, the link to the video that has all this important data about uh, how to uh, how how population grids are computed. And since we're now getting to about one hour, one and a half hours here, we are going to go ahead and call it a stream. So thank you very much for joining me, um, and hopefully you can join me again next time.